What is up, everybody? Welcome. This is my pre-release video. I'm going to tell you what I played. Uh, but before I jump into what my pool was and what I played, I want to hear from you. If you went to, if you attended an Aethervolt pre-release, please let me know. Uh, let me know what deck you built, what cards you pulled. Um, I really enjoy. You know, part of my channel is connecting with you as the, uh, you know, as my Magic friends. I get to hear what decks you built. So if you attended a pre-release, please let me know. Uh, I always love hearing about any cool pre-release interactions that you made. Uh, maybe some cool plays or a really car, a really cool card that you pulled. Or and truthfully, I love hearing about what deck you built because um, I don't play a lot of limited and so uh, really pre-release is my only uh, adventure into limited so I love hearing the, uh, about the other decks that other people built so before I explain it Hop in the comments, let me know, but I'm going to jump into my deck. So I built a uh, black-red uh, deck I called Garbage Fire. Um, <laughs> what we're looking to do is take advantage of the improvisability, and we're using cheap artifacts to kind of help fuel impulse. Uh, so, And then we also have the red theme with some burn spells, so just thinking of all these little junky artifacts and the red aspect of fire came up with garbage fire and garbage fire is an excellent description of the deck as far as what we're doing artifacts and fire and it's also an excellent uh, description of the gameplay of it it is very much garbage fire like uh, you know a garbage fire put out is not that issue but if you leave a garbage if you leave a garbage fire out unattended it becomes an issue so uh, yeah this deck was pretty bad my card pool was just not good um, let me start off with my card pool so as far as the rares go uh, I opened the uh, gear up her orrery, the one where uh, each player may play an additional land, and then if no player has no lands, uh, draw three cards. Uh, not really something I really want to jam in a limited deck. Um, my next rare was uh, Baral, uh, Chief of Compliance. So instant and sorcery spells, you cost uh, one. It's the legendary blue creature. Um, I really had no black or blue spells to kind of support this or anything else that made it worthwhile. Uh, then my other rare was Heroic Intervention. It's the uh, Johnny Green permanence you control, gain hexproof and indestructible to end of turn. Really, this to me, this is more like an uncommon type card, so I didn't really have any luck there. Uh, then I had Dubious Challenge, which is just 100% not really what I'm wanting to be doing in Limited. And then my other rare was uh, Aether Geode Miner. Now, I almost did go black-white aggro, but just because of the Aether Geode Miner. Uh, whenever she attacks, you get two energy, then pay two energy, exile her, then return her to the battlefield under your control. Um, unfortunately, my white support cards were just not that good. The only other white card that kind of made me want to go white was um, the Fair... Fairground, the uh, Oblivion Ring Dwarf that exiles a creature. But other than that, it was just very lackluster. Uh, I didn't really open any bombs or anything, so as I kept looking at the cards, I just kind of liked the burn from red, and I just kind of wanted to build an impulse. Like I said, I, I don't play a lot of limited, so uh, when I go to like a pre-release, you know, I like to build a fun deck that just kind of something that I normally wouldn't play. So I was kind of going for like an affinity light with this one, getting cheap artifacts out. But uh, let's start with the mana base. I have in this picture, I have a six-sided die on there. I ran seven and seven actually instead of six and six. Otherwise, the, the count's right. So seven swamps, seven mountains. And I also ran the um, the Spire of Industry, um, just because I was looking to get a lot of early mana rocks out, and truly our, our curve topped out at four. And so for running aggro with impulse, I felt that 15 lands was, uh, you know, it was an okay number. Uh, I probably could have gone 16, but, uh, you know, I opted to go with 15. So I had the Spire of Industry to help with mana fixing, but we're running two colors, so it didn't really matter. Now on to the cheap artifacts, the garbage. Uh, I ran on a uh, Ornithopter out there as... Uh, Zero cost, flying zero two. I did run the black spell, the subtle strike, where you can put a counter on it and give another creature minus one. But it was mainly, mainly in here just to fuel a quick little impulse hand. That way we can get it down for free. The other uh, thing that we ran was Implement of Combustion. Uh, on theme with dealing one damage to target player. We didn't really have any revolt cards, but uh, at least we'll be able to draw a card off that one and use it for a mana rock. I ran two Universal Solvents. Um... When I was playing, there's a couple times where I was able to get a Universal Solvent off. So, uh, you know, we used it as early impulse mana, but at the same time, uh, if we get to that 7 mana, we can use that as a little bit of a mana, like a mana sink to destroy target permanent. So, I ran two of those. I also ran Pacification Array. It was actually a pretty good card. I enjoyed playing with it. Um, just because we were going, I had the uh, Menace creatures and the Impulse, and I was able to tap down one of their bigger creatures a couple times and kind of get in some nice extra damage. So, And then it cost one, which helped fuel Impulse. Uh, we're also running a lot of human artificers, so I ended up running a pair of Inventor's Goggles, and that's where it gives them, it's an artifact equipment, it gives them plus one, plus two, and then whenever an artificer comes into the battlefield, you can attach it to it. 
Once again, keeping the impulse and then you get a little value from the creatures we're going to play on turn two. Then also ran server schematic. Uh, whenever he enters the battlefield or is put in a graveyard, create a 1 1 servo token for two. Um, I did run the black sack outlet artifact guy, but I ended up cutting him from the deck just because it really wasn't what we wanted to be doing. Now, the reason my promo I didn't cover, my promo was Glint Sleeve Siphoner. Um, this is what made me want to go black. I love playing Dark Confidant type cards and having the energy Dark Confidant as my promo. That's pretty much opening when I saw her in my promo pack. I was, alright, I'm going to go black. I, I just really want to play with Glint, Glint Sleeve. So, I enjoyed it. Uh, and unfortunately, I never got to cast her the whole day. I ended up like 1 and 2 at my pre-release. So, this, this deck was, uh, you know, hot garbage, man. Garbage fire. <laughs> uh, but I never got to cast her. Uh, on to the next two drops. I ran two uh, Aether Poisoners. So they have Death Touch 1-1. One, one. Uh, whenever they enter the battlefield, you get 2 energy. And then whenever it attacks, you may pay 2 energy if you do create some servo tokens. So ran 2 of those, a little Death Touch. Also ran an Eager Construct, once again, Fueling Impulse. And then we get that little Scry action if we were a little tight on mana. At the 3 drop, I ran the uh, Embrawl Gear Smasher. Uh, sacrifice an artifact, deals 2 damage to each opponent. I did get into a spot to where my opponent like stabilized with the Lifelink creature. Uh, but I did get my opponent down to like 3 life using the uh, the Gear Smasher, smashing some of like, the Universal Solvents and the Invention goggles, uh, but then he stabilized. I can't remember which creature it was, but it was a blue, I think it was a black creature that uh, he ended up giving it lifelink, and he stabilized after that, but the Gear Smasher, really fun card. You know, it's one of those times where I'm probably never going to play with Gear Smasher, and he was like a little, uh, he was a hero for me one game, so I always like playing with cool cards like that. Uh, the next three drop was Brazen Scourge, a uh, little 3-3 Gremlin uh, with haste, once again, just keeping with the beatdown theme. Then we get into the impulse. So we, had, we ran two Sweatworks Brawlers. Uh, they have Improvise uh, and Menace, so they can't be blocked except by two or more creatures. And uh, they were really good in the deck. It's one of those, like, uh, I opened up two of these, and I was like, yeah, I think we kind of want to... It was mainly, yeah, that's why I went black-red aggro, was because I had two of these Steamworks Brawlers, and I was looking to maybe get down some of the early uh, black Aether... Yeah, the black, the glint sleeve, and the aether uh, poisoner, and to kind of clean up with the uh, menace. Uh, I, I enjoyed getting them down every time. Every time I had them in open hand, it was a really good card on the uh, Sweatworks Brawler, so uh, it was cool to play with a card like that. And then we also, my other rare um, was the Quicksmith Rebel. Uh, enters the battlefield, target artifact you control gains, tap, deal two damage, target creature or player. Once again, I'm just keeping with the heavy artifact, artifact theme, and this was my rare. Uh, this was kind of like glint sleeve, and this Quicksmith Rebel were my two bombs, basically. I mean, that, that was truly about it. Then we ran Iron League Steed, um, Haste, Fabricate 1 so we can get in for a 3-3. And then we ran the two Foundry Assemblers that imp had improvised for a 3. As far as the spell go, uh, ran Double Shock, deal 2, two damage to target creature or player. Uh, as far as uh, another removal source and a way to pump up our creature, I used this as a combat trick and it was really nice, but the Subtle Strike, uh, it's 2 instant, uh, target creature gets minus 1, and then you can choose 1 or both. Target creature gets minus 1 and put a plus 1 counter on target creature. So I used that in a nice little combat trick one time to kind of clear the board up, and I was able to swing in for some uh, lethal the following turn at the way that my opponent declared blockers. Uh, another piece of removal was Welding Sparks, really good. Um, we've got a lot of those early artifacts out. Uh, deals X, Wilding Sparks, 3 mana, red. Uh, I mean, 2 colorless and red. It deals X damage to target creature where X is 3 plus the number of artifacts you control. So most of the time, we're, we're looking at 2 to 3 artifacts on the battlefield. So we can, um, the Welding Sparks can definitely clean up, clean house on that one. Then we ran Chandra's Revolution. Uh, deals 4 damage to target creature, tap target land. That land doesn't untap to his controller's next up step. Uh, upkeep. Uh, yeah, it was okay. It was alright. <laughs> I probably could have found a better use for it. Uh, but yeah, my pool was just very... Very, very weak, so uh, this was kind of what I had to go with. And then I had Tidy Conclusion, so destroy target creature, you gain one life for each artifact you control, and so since we're running so many artifacts, uh, it was a nice little removal spell at five. Not the best, but better than nothing, but yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else note noteworthy that I got in my, uh, in my pool. I'm actually going to just run through it real quick. Um, yeah, you know, I had a, some other vehicles, but they weren't that good. Um, I'm going through my stuff right now, and then I had um, the implement like an improvement. I had like two. I had a lot of like white artifact stuff, but it just wasn't wasn't good enough to go. And a lot of my green stuff was really weak. I did end up with the Narnam Renegade, and I probably could have gone green black aggro. Um, and if I was feeling feisty, I maybe could have gotten some obs on aggro if I was wanting to have some fun. I cut the artifact theme, but yeah, I was happy with my. Well, I really wasn't happy with my pool. It was kind of it was very. It was mediocre, but I always have fun at pre-releases, and uh, yeah, that, that was my deck. Uh, Red-black uh, garbage fire.
you know, figuratively and gameplay. So, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. But yeah, if if you went to pre-release, let me know what deck you played. Uh, any cool cards that you opened? Maybe you opened up one of the uh, inventions or something like that. So uh, I love hearing about that stuff. So this is one of the things where I get to get enjoyment out of my channel is hearing uh, about your experiences in the game of Magic because uh, I view all of you, you know subscribers, viewers, whatever you want to call it. I view it all as magic friends, so I love hearing magic stories from magic friends. So, yeah, if you got anything cool, let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Thanks, guys.